So, so we, we may start. <clears throat> I hope I would not lose the focus, but everything can happen. <coughs> <coughs> so last time, last time I explained the way how to prove the induction formula that induces infinity structure after we contract the cyclic complex using BV. At least I'll outline that. However, there is the alternative proof and this alternative proof uh, has wider replication because it's kind of universal. And this is uh, the topic of today's talk, it will be infinity structures from <coughs> higher topological quantum field theory. Namely, idea would be the following. We will consider the moduli space of geometrical data. And then we will construct the factorizable differential form on it. And then we will either use conditions that integral of the boundary is, is zero or the integral over, okay, we will always, either or, or integral over the boundary over some special cycle of I is, this one is zero. And in this way, we would be able to, to get many examples of infinity structures. Okay, so it is the plan. And this is the plan for today's talk. And uh, it is also the plan for tomorrow's talk. Okay. And I hope to cover this issue and provide examples. And uh, moreover, okay, maybe I'll also make some conjectures, but I'll, uh, but I'll do them tomorrow. So I need to explain what do I mean by factorizable differential form. So typically I will have the moduli space like, so simplest example would be points on the line. Here are parameters T1, T2. Three with parameters T1, T2. What else? M not M. So in order to distinguish disk from the sphere, I will always write equator on the sphere. And if there will be no this equator, it will mean it's a disk.
form. <laughs> now it's a disk. With points here and points here. And <laughs> there is also a space that carries my name, but uh, I'll, uh, okay, lots of mining spaces. You see, you see that there are many spaces like this. And uh, it's not the only type of spaces that you can consider. In conjecture, we will consider other interesting spaces, but at least we have this, at least four examples. So let us see what happens when we go to the actually infrared boundary. So in, instead of explaining what is infrared, let me show it in examples. So in example one, I take T1 to plus infinity. And I want to say that in this limit, the moduli space is cut into two moduli spaces Le for left configuration and right configuration. Actually, let me explain what, what's going on in case one. In case one, the moduli space is actually R to the N over R. So this example is n equals to three. In particular, well, here we have infinity. <coughs> we have this space and this space. <coughs> example number one. <coughs> Example number two, we have graphs and uh, similarly, we have three like this and three like this. There are more interesting Spaces like M zero M or M zero M. The sphere ah, uh, I promised to write these things. goes into two spheres. So we have this type of degeneration. And moduli space uh, goes into product of the two moduli spaces. So interesting thing here is that we have uh, co-dimension two phenomena. So here we had a co-dimension one phenomena. Here we have a co-dimension two phenomena. Actually, this co-dimension two phenomena may be considered as a co-dimension one phenomena where we have a cylinder and where we have an angle. So I'll comment on this issue a bit later. Actually, when we will study the L mod N spaces. So, uh, from the experience of people working with this M not N spaces. Okay, so these are lots of minor spaces. It is better to start understanding what's going on with L not N spaces and then go to M not N. So, so when people are trying to prove any kind of theory, they, not, they do not start with M not N. 
they always start with L not L. And uh, even the, you see that there was a paper like uh, several months ago and the plan of to prove a theorem so they construct so something like derived category uh, on M not L and they also start with L not L. And when Kyoji Saito did his job, he started with L not L. So it's just a tool, if you wish, to construct this M not L. So we will describe it in some detail. So example no, number four. Example number four is a disk with points on the boundary and points inside. And this disk factorizes. So we have some points <coughs> inside, some points outside. Here we have a, again co-dimension two, co-dimension one phenomenon. So this thing happens uh, everywhere, and uh, <coughs> you may even think about uh, higher dimensions. Because uh, why should we restrict ourselves with a real dimension one and complex dimension one? It's interesting to study dimension two. And it turns out that uh, something could be done in this direction. And uh, okay, I'll comment later on. However, here the story is not complete. So it's one type of argument, modulate spaces. Another, another issue is uh, what is the theory that you put here? And one of the theories that you can put in is uh, the homological data. So you can put homological data actually here and here. What you have to put here it's interesting. What you have to put here uh, is uh, what people call topological quantum field theory. And you'll get another structure. Moreover, in example in example one, in example one, you could actually Consider a homological theory and example B Morse theory. You still have example one. In example two, you can either consider homological theory and also, so Dong knows that here you can consider Foucault theory. I mean uh, old Foucault theory on uh, so where uh, these flows are determined by functions. I don't know how to call this Foucault theory, so you get several Foucault theories. Okay. Foucault Morse theory. So here People typically consider Grom of Wheaton theory. Here, the, the best known example is uh, what is called BV or deformation quantization theory. But you may also consider Foucault. So you see, here is a vast class of examples. If you understand how things are, are going on, you can get a lot of structures. You pick the moduli, you pick the theory, 
and you get an infinity structure. What is interesting is that sometimes you can pick up the theory not in the best way. And if you put in the, if you pick up theory not in the best way, you'll get infinity structure that is zero equals to zero. So it's not very impressive. So you get the structures uh, from uh, theories like bosonic string theory. In that case, it's basically zero equals to zero. If you consider this, mm -hmm. so what else I would like to add here, here, I said Grom of Peter theory, but you can also study what we studied with Shalin, so-called Hodge theory, or you can call it BCOV. Here, uh, there was another issue. Here, I, here we have M zero M. We can put here G. Here we may consider not only graphs, but also trees. The only problem here is the issue of trace. Okay, so after I explain this, let me give you one more application of this construction. You see, it's not only to get a infinity theory. So if you have <coughs> if you have a infinity theory, a infinity structure, you can use this structure in order to consider regularization, okay? I need to point it out specifically. And maybe I'll discuss, I'll discuss this on Friday, but not with Dom. Uh, So here I'd like to comment on so-called, I don't know whom to, whom to name it. Castella, like, okay, Castella, Castella Zwiebach. Renormalization. So first was Zwiebach, and then, okay, so he was number one, and then number two was Castello. However, in this, maybe we like to call it Zwiebach Castello normalization. Let me comment, what do I mean here? Suppose you have A infinity or L infinity structure. But it is a structure on infinite dimensional. So if it's a structure on infinite dimensional space, you cannot make trace. Take trace.
Example. Consider function on C and consider M2, that is multiplication. It's an infinite dimensional space. Multiplication is commutative and associative. However, you just cannot do this. It's impossible. In particular, put here one multiplication by one. Then if you plug here one, you hear you, you you get infinity here. So you cannot make loops. By the way, these loops are also called wheels, at least by Mercury. So physicists call them loops. Some mathematicians are called them wheels. So I don't know where can you find them but in any case you cannot make this neither loops nor wheels so what to do Consider operator, I would say, like Laplacian. Such that is of trace class. So how should we understand this e to the minus th? Just imagine that uh, this infinite dimensionality comes from uh, high frequencies, okay? So we need to suppress these high frequencies. If we can suppress these high frequencies, we could probably make, we can probably take a trace. So uh, this was called a heat kernel. And it was used uh, in smoothening various things. Now, idea that I'd like to put in is that you can put e to the minus th here and go from m2 to m2 tilde. Now this would be already of trace class. However, if you do this, you violate infinity structure. So I'll explain it in pictures. This is not equal to One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. E to the minus th 
e to the minus th, e to the minus th, e to the minus th. You see, I'm explaining it in this way because uh, there are several examples uh, in the literature and people mostly do not refer to each other. Maybe because they do not see the full picture. So my idea is try to provide you the full picture, okay? And you can study the details of particular example and particular papers. Okay, so these, these are not equal to each other. So what should we do? We should uh, correct this by uh, adding the M3. So this is M2 tilde. Q of M3, where M3 is basically e to the minus t, sorry, it's integral from zero to t, e to the minus t h, and I'll call here g dt, sitting here. So we already saw this guy. So this is uh, the basic object in uh, homological, uh, in, in higher topological quantum mechanics. So you may so you may correct in this way. And then this M2 and M3, and of course there, there should be another guy. So here we have T. Another guy is like this. Here we also have an integral. Okay, so it's Q of M3 tilde, where M3 tilde is this difference. Then you can check that M2 tilde, M3 tilde already have a, already form infinity structure. And let me call this a regularization. You may put here tau. So it's, it's a T regularization, okay? So this T is known by different names like beta. So Edward Beaton likes to call it beta. When he, de when he defined the index of something. But uh, you see beta is uh, like temperature. So I prefer to call it T because for me it's like time. And when you have this regularization, you can study master equation, actually. So BV operator, so you, you may apply BV operator uh, to everything here. So BV operator has a trace. Okay, but now everything is of the trace class. So why I cite Zwiebach and Castello? Because they somehow applied it in two different but related cases. So Zwiebach applied it when he was studying M2 of this type. And he was going from M2 of this type to, to objects of this type, putting here cylinders. So these are great papers of Zwiebach around 1992. 
Uh, Andri, a little bit of your formula for M3 got cut off. Um, so, uh, so you cannot see the formula there, right? A little bit. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. So, so this is in paper of Swibach 1992 that people uh, mostly missed. And uh, in Swibach case, we, he started with good M2 and he considered this as a renormalization flow. For graphs, this was uh, proposed by Castello, where he used this smoothening in order not to smooth um, the operation, he smoothed the BV operator. So BV operator is basically a trace. So you can put this in operation or you put it in the trace, the answer would be this, uh, basically the same. I prefer to put it in operation because uh, I want to make contact with Sviboch. But basically it is the same. Okay, so here we have an infinity structure, an infinity structure that is equivalent. So this is a story about what will happen with infinity structures. And uh, let me go to examples. So what I will go, what I'll do right now, I'll uh, can I will do the following thing. I will construct factorizable closed differential form, and after I can construct it in five examples, uh, you'll be convinced that you can do it in ten more examples. Okay. So first example, I will start with the first example. That is the Morse example. I'm sorry, your camera is out of focus now. Ah, I know this trick. And now it's okay. Ah, no. <clears throat> Interesting. So Morse example. So you consider gradient trajectories. You have target space. You have critical points, A, B, C. You have a Morse function, F. And you have the Morse flow. So trajectories go from A to B, from B to C, or sometimes from A to C. Let us solve this equation. We have the space of solutions, X of T. X of minus infinity is A. I'll call them X, A, B of T. X of plus infinity is B. Also, there is an action of R on moduli 
of x a b of t. I call it moduli. It's better. Yes, it's moduli because here by moduli I mean parameters. It takes x a b of t to x a b of t plus c. Just the shape. So this moduli is not the moduli space. This moduli is, is moduli of maps. I'll call it M, M. So moduli of maps, M, M. Okay. Then there is a map between M, M. Okay, M, M, A, B. There is a map between M, M, A, B times interesting R to the power N to X to the power N. I think I need to put the cross like here. It's called evaluation. So we evaluate the trajectory at points. It takes X A B of T and T one into X A B of T one. So, so this is a physical. So this, these are notations used in physics. So mathematicians would prefer not to put here T. But physicists like to put T just to remind that this thing depends on T. Actually, actually, it is better to write it not like this, but to write it like this. M, M, A, B, okay? No, oh, sorry. So M, M, A, B. Yes, I, I wrote it here. I just need to write down uh, what, what goes on. So there is X, A, B, T, M. So I'm sorry, let me just write it down properly. So maps are X A B at T as A depends on M. So M belongs to MN. So this map goes as follows. M sitting here times set of T1 Tn goes to X A B of T1 M X A B of Tn M. Okay. At least this is defined. By the way, now I am very surprised why when Gromov written invariant started, nobody wrote this explicitly. Because it is that simple. People started to write something in two-dimensional case without writing it at one-dimensional case. Okay, so now. Let us see the construction. Let us take collection of differential forms. Omega, omega one, etc. Omega n that belong to differential forms on X. I would say let us ask that all vanish. 
Oh, so okay. I don't even need to, to say that they vanish. So Andrei, if there are functions, they vanish at critical points. Andrei, so isn't there a problem that an element of MM is not a parameterized path, it's, it's parameterized path up to shifts of T. So I cannot actually evaluate it on T's. No, you see, I do not factorize. You see, hmm. there is an action of air on, on maps. I do not factorize, and that's important. I do not factorize yet. So MM is not the quotient? No, it's not the quotient. Okay. Okay. But however, it's a good question. You see, I, I wrote it, but people keep in mind that moduli means quotient. Mm -hmm. No, it's not the quotient. It's a space of parameter. Of course, and it, and it's crucial. So there is this map. So let let so so let us take pullback of evaluation, which product evaluation. So this belongs where. This belongs to MM AB times RM. Okay. I can always take a pullback. Now, what I what I'd like to recall, I'd like to recall that. This differential form is invariant and horizontal under the R action. So action of of R on mod is described here. Let me call here diagonal. And uh, the, the same action on Rn is T1 Tn go to T1 plus C Tn plus C. So if I if I shift times here and there, uh, nothing is changed. So so I should consider the coset. So this thing should be called somehow. However, we have a notion of a semi-stable map. Okay, so let us call it semi-stable Morse map. You see, we need to keep the same uh, names. You see, this was called semi-stable holomorphic curve. So everybody knows it's a semi-stable holomorphic curve. However, we need to have the same notation in Morse theory. So that's let let us call it semi-stable Morse. Maybe semi-stable Morse uh, line, not map Morse line. So that was a semi-stable holomorphic. No map Morse map. Sorry. In any case, it's clear what's written down here. Now,
Now, what could be? So this, so this is differential form, and uh, the procedure that I'd like to do would be. So I will try to integrate. Okay, not to integrate. In physics, we say integrate. In mathematics, we say for the following. So here there is a map to the space R I R N over R. So you project along the first factor. So you want to start the P star. And you think that you that you have uh, a form or R to the n over R. By the way, you may even write it somehow. So here is the so-called so Lefsch's symbol. Here you have omega one as a differential form acting on this Lefsch's symbol. And this Lefsch's symbol is the delta function on the space of trajectories that go out from uh, the critical point A. Then we have e to the minus t2 minus t1 lv and v is Morse field. Here we have omega 2, etc. all the way out to omega n. And here we have another outgoing left symbol. Sorry, you need to put here dt2 minus t1, iota v. Oh, who made this definition? dtn minus dtn minus 1, iota v. So this is differential form. Here it's explicit formula. Here, here is the meaning of, of this formula for n greater or equal than one. Uh, can you mention, uh, can you say again, what, what are these uh, left symbols? What, what is this thing? We have trajectory. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have point A. You have all outcoming trajectories. Yeah. Uh, they form a manifold. Yes. So you take delta function on this manifold. Mm. Well, I see. So to put here omega A means that the trajectory coming from A reaches some point. Let me check if you follow me. Mm -hmm. So what is the time that takes a point to go from the critical point to reach some point on the manifold? Uh, infinite time. Infinite time. Good, Pasha. Even, even you are tired and it's too late, you follow me. Yes. So this is a proper way to say what is e to the t or infinity lv. 
what this means. Okay. What do you mean by this? So it's an unstable manifold of a credit report. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes, right. yes. Is, is it like, um, is, is the manifold with corners or was it, what is it? Is it does it have a corner? Yes, a? yes, yes, it's a manifold with corners. So when you, when you say delta function of that thing, is it, is it okay to say that? Um, Maybe it is okay. Hmm. You see, you see, even if it's not okay, it's a place where to check if it's okay or not, because uh, because uh, it's not the only thing that will be involved, and maybe the corners would uh, be related to the case, sure, where n equals to zero. Mm -hmm. So this so this should read the corners. Because, uh, okay, so we have this. And we also have the following issue. We want to see what's going on with when n equals to zero. So when n equals to zero, here we have nothing. But still we can factorize the modular space. And this would give them the space of non-parameterized trajectory. And I need to put another M here because it's this space that was considered by Morse himself. So I am concentrating on this example because it's simpler than the example of uh, holomorphic uh, of of uh, semi-stable holomorphic map or semi-stable disk. So it is simpler. So that's why I concentrate on it. So, <clears throat> so I consider these guys and uh, and I would like to say that this, this differential form that I will call I is almost closed. So naively it is closed. However, it's not closed uh, because uh, trajectories could break. So actually DI <coughs> is proportional to contribution of the breaking trajectory. So one can study this equation in some detail and uh, see that, that there are two cases. So let me consider uh, case one. So in case one, MM, ABM is empty. It's not a very rare case. It happens uh, in particular when you have uh, something like uh, like what? So it's uh, it often happens when you have uh, complex okay Keller manifold in particular. So there there are many cases where we have this. 
where you have uh, where the difference in cohomology. So, so it happens, no, 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 no not with the Keller manifold. It happens uh, when you say don't have odd cohomology. So it happens uh, on toric uh, varieties in particular. Okay, like CPM. Here you have only even the maximum cohomology and here uh, this space may be considered as empty. So it's, 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 it's this case. In this case, you have no breaking phenomena. So in such case, di is exactly zero and you can integrate Consider integral of i over the space r to the n over r. I will do it like this. Di. So, sorry, Andre, I didn't understand. Did, did you mean that the boundary of mmm is empty or just mmm is empty? No, mmm -M -M empty. So this mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So in case one, in case one, I want to say that uh, how to say it? Um, one second. So space M M A B. Uh, has different, uh, so if the mention is different, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Case one, suppose, sorry. For virtual dimension of MMAB equal to one, it means that uh, the difference of index is like one. M M A B is empty. So it means no uh, no rigid trajectory. Ah. No rigid trajectory. So case one, no rigid trajectory. So in this case, You may integrate I over DI over RN over R, and this is zero. So this is I integrated over the boundary of RN to R. So for instance, for CP1, I can have, I can either have rigid trajectories or not, depending on which metric I put there or which Morse function I put there. Uh, so l l l let us consider that you take, uh, that you take, um, uh, yes, uh, that you take good Morse function mm -hmm. that doesn't have this rigid trajectory. Mm -hmm. so, so case one is, case one is a simplification. I just want to show, show the idea. Here we have this boundary. Now, this boundary consists of the following things. So here is n one points, and here we have n two points. So they are widely separated. 
and one plus n two equals to n. So this boundary is a union, and one plus n two equals to n. And here we have these spaces, r and one over r times r and two over r. So once again, the picture is like this. And here trajectory goes from A to B. And it is clear that if trajectory, if it takes a long time for trajectory to go, it uh, goes to point C. So on this boundary, AB is AB equals to integral of R and one over R I A C integral I C B R and two over R. And here I have a sum over N capital equals to N one plus N two. So this is a quadratic equation. And uh, of course, here I have an argument like omega one up to omega n. And here it means that I have fun, uh, forms like omega one up to omega n1, omega n1 plus one, up to omega n. And these omegas are distributed between these two things. So I have many quadratic equations. And these equations are a real dimension one analog of WDVV. A real oriented And uh, let us see what this equation actually say. So simplest is omega one AB AC omega two CB equals the same when omega one and omega two are interchange. It's the leading first equation. Second equation, AC omega one, omega three, CB plus Omega one, Omega two, Omega three. You see, the, these things look very similar to WDV equation. However, it's the real story oriented because trajectory go from A to C. And also uh, ends are different. Here we have omegas, here we have critical points. 
they are not the same. So what we have defined here? We have defined here new operations. So it, so it is closed, of course, only if omega are closed. Let us suppose that omega is closed. You see, when I said closed forms, I assume that omega are closed. So here we have new operations, like cohomology of x to the power n goes to endomorphism of the span of critical points. So but for n greater than one, you have here new operations and, uh, and what can you say about these operations? Is that they satisfy quadratic equations. And you may ask what, what is the algebraic meaning of these quadratic equations? And actually the meaning of these quadratic equations is, is the following. <clears throat> so let me call this span of critical point as W. It means that cohomology of X as a Lee is as an abelian Lee algebra form infinity representation. So do they form a deformation of a Morse differential? Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course they form the formation of the Morse differential. So uh, at the moment you see, I consider a case where there is no Morse differential, but I wanted to, to consider this case first. You see here, here I put n, n greater than uh, or equal than one. So in particular, uh, uh, how, you can, you, how you can reinterpret it? Let me raise geometrical piece for a moment. And then introduce times. So I didn't understand that. in which sense there was no Morse differential here. Because I consider I consider a case where n is greater than one, and I consider the case when there are no rigid trajectories. You will get Morse differential in a moment. I see. So now, now let us introduce time or well, parameters. Tau and coordinates on H of X 
with or without parity. So it means that if you have, so for even, you take tau A odd. And then you may write down generating function. And let us call it N of tau AB. Then it's funny that these quadratic equations, all these quadratic equations could be written in a, as a simple equation, N squared equals to zero. So it means that we have differentials. So it's so it starts with the term linear in tau. Now, so this, so this is easier to get. Now, consider specific case, case two. Uh, so this the, case one. What, what does this way of writing mean, exponents and then take a b, what, what does it mean? You expand exponent yes. as uh, tau a h a tau a h a tensor Mm -hmm. anti symmetrize and you apply the separation. Apply which operation? This. Ah. New operations, let me call them M. Everything is called M. Ah, okay. So I apply M to this. I, I, I should write it, you see. Mm -hmm. I see. So I have a question. Yes. Uh, to say that uh, this operation gives you a Lie algebra representation, you have to show that this action is compatible to the multiplication of this cohomology algebra, right? I don't have, you see, here, here. Uh, at the moment, I don't have this cohomology algebra. I can, oh, I here, here just... only the Lie algebra, a billion Lie algebra is used. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. You just consider it as a vector space. Yes. No bracket. Okay. Actually, actually, you may call it a bracket, no multiplication. <coughs> so, so in this case, the bracket is zero, and I and I do not see multiplication. Maybe it is good to ask. Uh, okay, so so here, so here, I am actually treating the story where I interchange omegas. In order to see multiplication, I need to consider another version. But here, I uh, here I am showing this. So you can play two games. In one game, you integrate over complete space R to the L. So you interchange points. In other case, you keep them in proper order. In this case, you will have another relation. I am just showing you what's going on. And uh, by the way, it's exactly case that was missed by uh, Fukaya when he studied uh, holomorphic uh, his theory, because he considered uh, more trajectories on uh, graphs, 
However, however, he never considered the trajectory of passing through cycles. So would he study this? He could enlarge his theory at the very beginning. Don't get the remark for you. But at the moment, uh, at the moment, uh, I show this. Now, <clears throat> consider case two where there is Morse differential. So where there is Morse differential, Morse differential, and when you factorize, there is a correction. Correction comes from the following case. A, C, C, B. We have also these structures. And these structures would correspond to semi-stable trajectories. Semi-stable trajectories mean that there is no observation point. And the factor you are taking is like this. So you have nothing to evaluate. However, you still can count. OK? So this thing is known as Morse differential. And if you include this, equation should go as follows. So you just add this contribution to M. And you, and, and you interpret this as coming from the virtual uh, moduli space R to the zero over Rn over R. You see? Here you have no points, but but you have a symmetry. And you apply the symmetry to the space of max. And that's how you, you get unparameterized trajectories. And you count them. OK, you count them with signs, of course. So actually, the proper description of Moore's theory is something like this. So without M, it is what Morse did like 100 years ago. And here is uh, a refinement. And one of the way to get this refinement is to study these closed differential forms. And you can also, I think, generalize it, generalize it to chains. Why should we only consider cycles? It's also interesting to study chains. So I have not checked, but most probably, conjecture, this would have a chain generalization. So let us consider the map. Not of cohomology, are chains on X. Okay, to the power L, to this, and domorphism of double. So before before you change this uh, this deformation is kind of morally very similar to um, uh, quantum cohomology, right? So the of course, of course. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that when people started studying quantum cohomology, they happened to study not the simplest case. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pasha, as you know, I'm always trying to find the simplest example. Mm -hmm. So it is my idea. 
In order to understand something, you take the simplest example. So when you take the simplest example, so you, you, you have a phenomena. Then you take the simplest example. Then you have phenomena and simplest example. And then you know how to generalize. So in order to see the, what's going on, you need to look for the simplest example. Exactly, it is the one dimensional version of uh, quantum cohomology that was uh, partially missed by uh, Fukaya, that was missed by uh, Kansevich Manin, so they were not interested. That was missed by Morse. However, some people who are doing more theory found it. But the issue is not who found it. The issue is what's going on. That's what's going on. So if you have the, if here we have chains, of course, we should have another differential. N tilde tau plus d plus, let me call it d acting on z on chain. It's the only thing that you can get. So now we, instead of, uh, sorry, instead of delta functions of, on cycles, you want to have delta functions on chains. Delta function on chains. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to say is that equation is always the same. D square equals to zero. There is a great book of Gilfant and Malin that starts from, I think, Cartan, who said, I'd like to see all consequences of equation d square equal to zero. So actually there are many consequences. And here the, uh, there are such consequences. So if, when we understand this, we can generalize it further and further. Moreover, after we understand this, we may ask what happens if we change What happens if we change Morse function? Okay. Of course, the equation n squared equals to zero would be changed by conjugation. It's another conjecture. I checked some examples. So it, it has changed as conjugation if, if somehow number of critical points is not changed. And here I have a question. <coughs> My question is, <coughs> by the way, you can change, you, you can check this in example. <laughs> My question is, what happens if I grow up two critical points? Why, why is this tilde on one of the factors? factors? Oh, sorry. It's because <laughs> so what would happen if I grow two critical points? Uh, yeah, sorry. So this N also gave the information of the homology of the manifold. Of course. Yeah, so you, it's not a, you change a function. So this N contains a lot of information. Right. And uh, And also, you see, what's, what's interesting here is that if, if the number of critical points is changed, I have another elementary operation. And my question is, wait, 
if I have the space W and I have this multiplication and also contraction, So, can I consider this as a group or what? If I, ha if I have this contraction and the rotation. By the way, this rotation is with inter-rotation with integer coefficients. You see, I, I have said this, but all ingredients here are integers. If you have the integer basis in homology, in cohomology, everything here is integer. It's just a number of trajectories passing through cycles. So actually, I have this type of operations, this type of rotation, and this type of contraction. Example of this process. A, B, A1, A2, B. Yeah, it, it, it looks, I don't know, more and more like, I don't know, SL2Z or something rather than notations. You see, I, I'd like to understand how to, you see here is C11. I don't know how to describe these equivalence relations. But why it's important? It's because it is these equivalence relations that uh, should replace what I'd like to call linear algebra on complexes. So we, when we have linear algebra, we have a natural, we have equivalences that are rotations, okay? However, if we have Z2 graded things with differential, we have additional operation like contraction of a cyclic complexes. These together form some structure. Yeah. And I would be very pleased if you tell me what is uh, this structure. So Andre, the, 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 there is a, a, a science of elementary operations on complexes. And so the, the right person to ask about it is, is precisely my dad. But it's essentially algebraic K theory. You mean this and this? So, uh, it's, well, one operation is like adding a tiny, tiny two-term complex. Yes. It's 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 uh, operations over integers. Of course, over integers. Yes. Uh, so, I. I it looks like what you're writing, but uh, I, I'm um, hesitant to. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I, I need to ask people who know algebraic K theory if this mm -hmm. is actually an algebraic K theory. It it it, it looks like like that. Okay, thank you, Pasha. You always give one sentence remarks that you see that bother me. Okay, thank you. There, so are many, there are many, many flavors of it, and uh, I don't know, whatever, <coughs> what housing K theory or whatever is the right flavor, but uh, maybe. But you see, but it is simple. Mm -hmm. By the way, when I say about Morse function, I mean the following. So, like this, like, like here. Uh, it's interesting. You see, well, when, I, when I mean, when I say this, suppose we have trajectories from A1 to B. And suppose we have a chain Z. I just want to give an example. Mm, no, like this. Suppose we have a point here, Z1. And suppose we have a point here, Z2. And consider trajectories going from A to B. 
here there is one trajectory going through the one. It is clear. Here there is no such trajectory. Then when you move point Z1 to Z2, something, something has changed, right? It will, here we had only one number one, here we have number zero. If you consider M a one B. You see, I'm just showing you some elementary move. Consider M a one B applied to delta function at Z one. Here it is one. When I move z1 to z2, this one goes to zero. Okay. However, this motion is the boundary of the interval. However, so however, you see, I'm trying to check, I'm trying to check that, uh, you see, it's like a contradiction because Z1 and Z2 seem to be homologous, okay? However, this, this change is compensated by the following thing. I have n a one b, so I I try to understand. Here I have the boundary of the interval z one z two. Okay, equals to n n of what? n of c b. to I, Z1, Z2. And this is not zero. And here we have a differential. NCB is a differential. It intersects the chain. So it's not just one goes to zero, just like this. This motion from one to zero is compensated by this NCB intersecting the chain. You, you, you should play all this game and uh, consider the complete equation. There are many phenomena captured here. Many phenomena captured here. And once again, everything here is over integer, okay? So I have not studied this in, in full detail because some mathematicians discourage me. I don't know why. Maybe because I missed uh, good examples or good partners, but it is very interesting to study. And also, this is kind of an example of infinity structures in Morse theory. So once again, there is, uh, there is uh, this version. It's uh, infinite representation of abelian Lie algebra. And then there is also so-called A version. So in A version, you do the same, but you keep order of points. So omega one is before omega two. And if you do it this way, you will get another relation. And, and these relations I call A type. Okay. 
Why you may ask why A? Because uh, why why A? Because omegas, because omegas should be considered like operators and uh, that act between different uh, spaces, and you cannot interchange them. It's like in it's like in categories. So there is an A version of this. Okay. And uh, I'm I'm ready to discuss the A version and details of this with someone who is interested. It's actually interesting stuff. Don't know that I just need to find someone who is interested so I could discuss it with him or her. Okay, now let us have a break. Meanwhile, who could recommend me a good uh, uh, source on algebraic K theory for beginners? Okay, I'll find. I'll find out. So this uh, this construction uh, uh, give this uh, give the quantum uh, of a quantum system. Or <coughs> it, <coughs> it is not exactly quantum. <coughs> It's an analog of quantum multiplication that's actually an, an integer valued multiplication. Yeah, because for a classical query point, you can have this uh, perturbative uh, vacuum. However, it's not a true vacuum. So it could be connected by a quantum tunneling. So that is given by a connecting orbit. Oh, you you both are connecting, but, but these are just more trajectory. Yes. Yeah, yeah so, so it, it's yeah. exactly the same. But right. uh, what people were not doing before, people were not uh, saturated. Okay, if you understand this trajectory is like instantons, you need yes. to saturate zero mode. So what people considered before, they considered just number of trajectories. So uh, right. if there is a space of trajectories, it's better to integrate some differential form against it. Yes. But of course, this differential form should be given uh, from uh, evaluation of the room. Yes. And uh, it is true. And it would be true also in the case of Fukai category. Mm. <clears throat> So, th so this Witten complex gave the true vacuum of a quantum system. Yes, so Witten, Witten complex is for tau equal to zero. Okay. And, and here I explain the tau deformation. Okay, yes, yes. Right. So it is known in physics. 
when you have instantons, instantons produce you zero moves. Yes. You want to absorb uh, something. Okay? Right. You yes. need to absorb uh, the uh, zero mode. And uh, okay. Oh, okay. people call it fermionic con condensates. So in so actually it started in dimension four, not even in dimension two. It started in dimension four when uh, Russian physicists, namely, okay. It's since it's a break, I'll give the historic remark. Even before Witten, I think around around eighties. The group of Russian physicists that are Okay, Novikov, Schiffman, Weinstein, and Zaharov. So they were actually physicists, but they studied instantons. in D equals four. And they observe that instantons have fermionic zero modes. And from this, they found so-called vacuum correlators of Gruinos. And they found that this thing, okay, X1, X2, X3, do not depend on X. So these are like quantum cohomology, like in D equals four theory. So they actually discovered topological theories in the very baby version. Then they went to D equals two and they study CPN sigma model. And they again found this condensate. They call it fermionic condensate. But this was actually quantum cohomology. And it was around 1980. I need to find out the date. So that's how they somehow almost found a quantum cohomology, but nobody explains them that they found something interesting. So they were stuck with these formulas and these formulas, and they never made a complete theory. And they never studied, uh, so this, so what they studied was basically n equals one, excuse me. So would they study n equals two, excuse me, they could get more, but they never studied it. So this is somehow related to the Witten's paper. Written 1994 about the Donaldson invariance on Keller manifolds.
But of course, uh, we transmitted it properly on the four dimensional Keller manifold. And uh, these guys were able to study it only on R4. So they found these numbers and uh, that's it. They missed uh, topology here. They considered only R4. However, they found these interesting numbers. Okay, so now let me continue. So after yeah. this interesting story about uh, Morse theory, yes? I'd like to give two generalizations. Generalization one. Generalization one. It is due to Fukaya. So Fukaya actually studied the following thing. So he had actually a ribbon graphs. Oh, I, I'll write it like this. But it's not points here that are interesting. It's interesting that we have a manifold X. We have a ribbon graph and we label okay, like boundary components by Morse functions F1, F2, F3, and F4. Okay, so maybe it's bad to call it A, B, C, D. We put here a critical point of the following function, f2 minus f1. We put here critical point of f3 minus f2, etc. So these critical points are like, so these f's, like objects, critical points, like morphisms. They are objects and morphisms. If you study Lagrangian, uh, if you study Lagrangian submanifolds, and these are the tropical version of holomorphic disks, but let me read it from this point of view. Then we put here gradient trajectories. Of what? Sorry, Andre, just to be sure, on the right, it should be F3 minus F2. Or of course, yeah. sorry. Oh, no. Here we put gradient trajectory of what? Of uh, here of F2 minus F1. And here, of course, gradient trajectory of F3 minus F1. Okay. And you can compute the number. of such configurations. 
So this is clearly generalization. of the line where we have here F1, F2. And this is, of course, Fukaya generalization. However, here, we put here cycles, OK? And, and that's what uh, missed in the original Fukaya papers. It would be good to put here cycles in different places. Okay, here we can put cycle times time cycle. And we can study this enumerative problem. How to go through cycles. We can put here cycle in either on one boundary or on another boundary. So if we put here cycles, we will have the following. So from this construction, we will get an infinity structure. Putting cycles here would mean that we'll have an infinity structure deformed by tau. And the equation would be similar equations that I wrote before. So M wedge M equals to zero would be replaced by M tau wedge M tau equal to zero. And these cycles here uh, would uh, what corresponds to deformation? Deformation of what? Deformation of objects. And uh, Dong, as I, as, I, as I understand now, Foucault considers this, of course. Yes, he, he called it bounding co-chain. Yes, so uh, I, I'm just trying to show similarity. Then, how we can prove a infinity equations here without going to holomorphic disks? You do exactly the same thing. You have omega, wedge omega. So it corresponds to the left and left symbol. Here we have multiplication of symbols here. And then you take this e to the T L V minus D T I V, where V is the gradient, roughly speaking, of F3 minus F1. And here we have another omega, and here we have another omega. Something like this. And you study, you, know, you study such differential forms. And once again, you ask if these differential forms are closed, and how do they factorize? And when you know how do they factorize, you have this quadratic equation. So what I'm trying to explain is how to get Fukaya, deformed Fukaya equations without saying, without even saying words, holomorphic disk. So holomorphic disks to derive, so in order to derive this limit of Fukaya theory, Holomorphic this cannot need it at all. It is purely Morse like construction. And the proofs here do not involve holomorphic disks, just Morse type arguments. And that is actually this type of argument. You have a differential form on the So 
A tilde infinity Fukaya get closed differential form on modulate space of metric graphs. Okay. And then there is a good question. What do can we have loops? That's what I'm interested in. I think we can. If we if we can have loops. So what loop would mean? Function, function, F1, F2, F3. Uh, F4. And now, at the moment, F1, F2, F3, F4 are given. What can we put here? Any F5. Huh? So we need to study this thing. And there are several options. First option, consider fixed F5. And second option, look for arbitrary F5. So if you do this way, you might say that it's not a, is it still a disk? No, it's it's not a disk anymore. It's a real surface. So let us put here F5. And I am not sure, maybe Fukai now studies this. Don, do you know, does he study such graphs? At least in this con context, I don't think so. But it's it's clear, so it's, it's it's clearly obvious that you need to study this. Okay, if he is not studied, somebody else may study. And it's, it'll be interesting to find examples because this would be a, a infinity with wheels or with loops. And this is clear what would be the relations and uh, due to Fukai intuition, we could get a good example. Okay, so okay, so this is once again conjecture proposal. Okay, so, so this comes from Morse-like theories, okay? morse Fukaya. I think it's better to put it this way. Started by Morse and developed further by Fukaya, right? Especially because old Morse could be considered zero F, right? It's still Fukaya, but zero and F. One object is zero. And now, <laughs> now let me come to, to the thing that I announced. That we had homological data. So, from homological data, we also could consider these differential forms, I. Okay. 
Okay, let me work with one. Sorry. I, I'm giving just an example. I give an example of the differential form. on R3 over R. And now I want to take H projector on the, remember we have this V ultraviolet and G homotopy. And uh, I can still check that di equals to zero. So integral of i over, in this case, r3 over r, di equals to i integral of a boundary of R3 over R. And here I have the same equation. Sum over subdivision of this space. And one plus and two equals, in this case, three. Integral of what? R and one over R, integral R and two over R of similar eyes. So on the left hand side, I have zero. On the right hand side, I have integrals. So I have quadratic relation. And this quadratic relation is the integral of I over the fundamental cycle. And integral of i over the fundamental cycle is, of course, the following thing. I just put homotopy here. I just put m here. So I understand these objects as integrals of a fundamental cycle. And I understand quadratic relations as a result of this factorization property. And I can do it for the for these spaces, Rn over R. I can do it for the so-called metric graphs. So here for me, the crucial thing was that when T1 goes to zero and I want to, to take M1 from right hand side to left hand side, I do not have a jump. So here for me, there was a crucial thing that M1 squares to zero. However, I can play with the different generalization. Then, Then what can I take as M1? 
example, I can take M1 as phi A tau A, such that phi A are commutative operators. Okay, super commutative. And tau A are opposite parity parameters. So here I so here I am coming to construction that is exactly similar to construction that I get that I got in static Morse theory. Actually, let me consider the example of an example, okay? So this is homological theory example. Now, example of an example. Let base V, that is V infrared plus V ultraviolet B. of forms on some manifold X. Take V infrared harmonic forms take V ultraviolet complement Take D star over Laplacian as homotopy. Let me put it on compact X. Take M1 being tau A omega A. Then here I get construction similar to Morse. Omega ATA H Omega ATA H Omega ATA inclusion projection. So here I had D star over the pleasure. And of course, with the equation, I square equals to zero. So it's exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same structure with the same parameterization that I had in Morse theory. The, the difference is the change of homotopy. Here, homotopy is a Lorentz homotopy because it's a Lorentz or Hodge. Lorentz Hodge homotopy. 
but you can easily interpolate between Lawrence Hodge homotopy and Moore's homotopy as Edward Witten did it in 1982. That's what Sen was mentioning. So this is Morse answer. And this is Hodge answer. You see, they, they look pretty well the same. To see that they are actually the same, you see, I need to say that 1 over LV has no meaning. So this is exactly Morse theory that we studied, where I have trajectories that going through points, that going through forms, omega a, omega a, omega a, weighted by parameters, parameters, t a, t a, t a. So this was Morse, and this is Hodge, and uh, the answer are supposed to be not the same, but equivalent. Because I could move homotopy from this to this. What is interesting is that here I have something integer. And here I don't have something integer. However, maybe here I need to be accurate with something. And this is very robust you cannot you cannot break this this is something very fixed but not integer this is more tricky integer but uh, with subtleties so once again this was an example of the general homological example. You see, I'm trying to tell you that it is the same. That uh, Moore's theory is a particular case of general homological setup. If you consider uh, Moore's uh, vector field as homotopy. Okay. So you actually put everything. Can you think about it as different gauge fixings? Exactly, exactly. These are two, two gauge fixings. And what is, uh, what is most important for physicists, okay, is that this is about trees. Now we can study loops, okay? When we try to loop this way, we may think if uh, if there are infinities here or not. We cannot take traces here. However, if we look at Morse language, you do not need to take traces. That's what I want to say. So. If you want to study loops, you may go around uh, what I call uh, Zwiebach uh, Castella regularization. You can go according to Fukaya. Let us call it Fukaya. Fukaya Vita, uh, who was the first? Witten. Okay, Witten Fukaya regularization. Okay. 
you you take this morse homotopy and when you take the morse homotopy you probably would be able to reproduce loops without cutoff without taking cutoff and this would be very interesting you will get uh, auxiliary parameters namely the type of Morse function, but you would compute the same loops without infinities, without differential points, just numbers, intersection theory. Hmm? So this may be good on application. These may, so this may open a new way uh, in uh, computing uh, loop amplitudes in chern simons like series. That's why I asked Dong, did Fukaya consider loops? And Dong answered, not. He did not consider loops. But as a physicist, okay. But physicists need to consider loops. So let us consider loops in the way how Fukaya would consider them. Okay. So one more question. Yes. If I have a Morse function without critical points, then what does it mean for the loop amplitudes? So for loop, so you see, I, I don't know yet, but uh, Morse function without a critical points uh, means that, uh, that. How can this happen on the compact manifold? Of course it cannot happen. Yeah, on the cylinder it could happen. Right? Ah, non-compact. Uh, you, you have to compactify somehow. Yeah. By the way, there is something that I know is that uh, uh, sometimes you can have periodic trajectories. Mm. And, and this also had to be taken into account. Just suppose you have a trajectory of the vector field. But not gradient trajectories. Periodic not ah. gradient. That's a very different ah. story. Yes, sorry. Gradient trajectories couldn't be periodic, right? Mm. So, okay, so here I don't, here I don't know details, but actually, I need to say something inspiring. I actually would like to see if Morse computation would replace loop computation in Lorentz gauge. Yeah, so it would be, it would be great because uh, so in order to do this, you need to set, you need to pick up arbitrary set of Morse functions, mm. compute numbers, and moreover, you may prove the integrality of something. You see, when you are doing this, it's hard to prove that uh, integrals are integers. So we know from the answer, like in chern simons that they are integers. Yeah. No, By I, the way, uh... we do not know it. Uh, maybe we know it for chern for simons they are integers, but do we know it? Um, By the way, a, a, another application, consider uh, so-called uh, deformation quantization of Kamsevich. He used uh, like Lorentz uh, gauge. Why not to use uh, something like Morse Fukaya gauge? Sorry, not. Uh, Witten Fukaya gauge. What would be wrong? 
You see, that's why no. I spent some time explaining you the relation between Fukaya and uh, Lawrence, putting them together in the homological context. Yeah, 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 that sounds good. No, I was wondering whether, you know, when there is a cylinder or something similar, then we recover this, this axial type gauge from the, the Morse, what you call Morse, right? So, yes. Uh, maybe you said, uh, so when you have a gradient vector field that sort of pointing down the cylinder, right? You're setting those components of the. Yes, yes, the I know. I, 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 I know it. And in, in Chern Simons, the, the, the theory doesn't have any loops in this gauge. But it does have loops when you consider like a, you know, a usual metric. Okay. So, so you can try to deform the metric to go to this axial. Ah, gauge. now I see. Hmm. Now I see. So it means that these two gauges, maybe it seems that these, that these two gauges are not equivalent. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily because, mean that. Because what Wheaton, what Wheaton uh, figured out is that Morse uh, gauge is equivalent to Lawrence gauge. Mm. So actually, Wheaton's paper in 1982 mm -hmm. was basically about uh, the, homo the homotopy between homotopies. Mm. Okay. You see, when I'm saying something, it should have not only examples, but potential applications, right? So, Witten, 1982, in modern languages, he considered Q being D, he considered G equals to D star plus IV, and he put here an epsilon. And he said, consider this set of homotopies. He said that uh, when epsilon equals to zero, it is the Morse theorem. He says that when epsilon is not zero, you may gauge this thing away. You may gauge this thing away. Huh? Mm -hmm. So consider two cases. Epsilon equal to zero. It's Morse. Moreover, let me propose something. Epsilon formal. It means on the power series of epsilon. I don't know what it could be, but it should be some kind of version of Morse theory. Conjecture or question. What are epsilon coefficients? If I consider this homotopy. By the way, what would be this problem? So it's a problem of changing of homotopy. So homotopy goes to homotopy tilde. That is homotopy plus Q of I don't know what, lambda. And then we have something. But basically, theory is Morse. Everything here, if epsilon is formal, everything is governed by the most trajectories. So it's interesting to study. I think we will get something like a gauge transformations on the Morse. Uh, complex. 
that depends on epsilon. However, when epsilon is one, okay, okay, finite. And we, you, we can write one over epsilon, then epsilon d star plus IV, look, it is e to the f over epsilon d star e to the minus f over epsilon. Ah, huh? it's Edward Witten formula. Mm -hmm. With epsilon standing here. So what does it mean? It means that whenever epsilon is non-zero, IV could be gauged away. And we get equivalence with the Hodge theory. Because this is definitely a homotopy. So that's how to move between D star and IV. So then you ask me what if this V is what? Is not Morse. Or is Morse a non compact space? No, I mean, we, I think I was looking, I'm not sure if it's the, the same thing, but it looks similar, right? Of course, of course, I understand. You see, I understand what gauge theory is, I understand mm -hmm. what gauge fixing is. Mm -hmm. After all, I am from. Institute of Theoretical and Experimental Physics. Yes. I had to know what it is. Otherwise, they would fire me for not knowing what the Excel gauge is. Okay. Yeah, but so do you think it's Excel gauge is something like uh, Morse gauge? Yes. Okay. Because uh, because uh, there is a so-called Nikrasov gauge. He, he never published, but he explained it to me several times. So we have a gauge field, AA. Pick up vectors. VA and write the following gauge. Here, no summation over A. So let each component to propagate along each vector. And this is a gauge. And here I, I, here I have some problems, because I definitely know that some of these vectors should be zero at the vertex. And but since it's homotopy, I don't know how to explain it properly. So I need to think about it. But uh, this is Nikrasov gauge. And this Nikrasov gauge is uh, similar to uh, Fukaya gauge. Because what is Fukaya gauge? Okay, okay, you see, we start. We are doing gauge theory because we are discussing different gauges, okay? Fukaya gauge. So Fukaya never had this color index. However, Fukaya had the number of the brain. So Fukaya had AIJ, okay? So Nikrasov gauge is EVIJ AIJ equals to zero.
So if we take Vij equals Dfi minus Dfj, we see that Nikrasov gauge becomes Fukaya gauge. So sorry, what's what's A I J? Ah, so here we have A A A. We call it the color index. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what Fukaya is studying? Fukaya has no color. However, Fukaya has brains, and these brains have numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have intersection of brains. Or at least we have strings, sorry. In Fukaya language, we have strings. going from I to J. And we call this field AIJ. Then this diagram, I, J, J, K, is the vertex, I, I, J, I, J, K. So this is the gauge theory language. This is Fukaya language. So it's, it's some sort of coordinates on the target, I, J. What? This no, I, J. There are fields on target. So, so, so sorry, this Fukaya gauge, it's it's for which gauge theory? It's for A model, right? Fukaya. Okay, you may, yes, for A model. So there's some target and all, all these indices, they are about some kind of coordinates on the target. So these indices are label brains mm -hmm. on target, of course. Target X. You have Lagrangians of manifolds. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily transversal. L1, L2. And there are strings connecting them. And what you study are holomorphic disks. Mm -hmm. So this is a target picture, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is the world ship picture. I, J, K, etc. And here we have something that is called AIJ, AJK, etc. In transversal Fukai pictures, this AIJ was what? It is, of course, differential uh, form on the target, okay? So that's supported on the intersection of Lagrangian manifolds, Li, Lg. So if they, if they are on the top of each other, 
you consider AAJ as uh, a differential form on this Lagrangian manifold. So what, what were these Foucault functions? Foucault functions meant the following. You see, maybe I wrote it not properly. Proper way to write it down, of course, is to write this Lagrangian. And here we have not X, but T star of X. I'm sorry. So how we write Lagrangians in T star of X? Here we have X. Here we have T star of X. And here we have different Lagrangians. So Lagrangians are given by generating function. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they intersect. So equation, okay. Equation, so it's not F, I'm sorry. F corresponds. Equation is momenta is D, DF over DX, okay? So this is how you write down Lagrangian uh, submanifolds in T star of X. So now I'm explaining what Fukaya is. Uh, I still have no idea what, what are AAJ. Okay. I'm sorry if if that if that derails your intent for the kind of the, the talk, then you should disregard the question. Okay, A I J is A I J belongs to omega star on X, where target manifold for A model is T star of X. So it's not, it's not a field of the A model. So A, of course, of course it's not a field of A model. Okay. Because it corresponds to Lagrange model, it corresponds to Lagrange, to Lagrange submanifolds. Okay. So in general, okay. In general, A model, you have Y. And you have Lagrangian submanifold L1. You have Lagrangian submanifold L2, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have holomorphic disk, mm -hmm. okay? So these are open strings in A model. Mm -hmm. Now, consider very particular A model. Take Y be equal to T star of X. Okay? Mm -hmm. Consider very particular Lagrange uh, submanifolds given by this relation. Mm -hmm. That momenta is df over dxi. Moreover, you can put here small lambda. Okay. Nothing would depend, not, nothing would actually depend on lambda. Later we would like to turn lambda to zero. So for fixed lambda, As a disk, ah, okay. Sorry, I have not explained this. For fixed lambda, consider the holomorphic disk, okay? And project it to X. Do you know what you will give? You will see in projections. 
in projection, you will see amoeba. And the size of this amoeba is about lambda. Okay. When this lambda is going to zero, this amoeba goes to the light. Pasha, have you know? Haven't you know this? No. So it's new for you, yes. Mm -hmm. So, it, so it is. So this amoeba goes to a line. That is the gradient trajectory. Mm -hmm. And you may check that this flow becomes the homomorphicity here becomes the morph becomes the morph uh, becomes the morph equation for the limiting amoeba. So it was it's exactly what uh, discovered Fukaya in the beginning of 90s. When he came to Moscow and showing his picture. Mm -hmm. Of course he never showed pictures with amoeba because nobody would buy amoebas. But you can buy more trajectory. Now, he was, he was doing not only this, of course. So I write on the target. I write a picture on the target. So y is t star of x. So here is x. So here is the critical points. Here is the size lambda of amoeba. So you may ask, what is going on? tell you that when lambda is going to zero, so-called string field, whatever it, it, it may be, becomes a differential form. One X. And here is the trajectory. Uh, differential form no, uh, maybe not differential form not differential form so the string itself okay string what so, so what is a string string is something that uh, connecting else So string goes, roughly speaking, to a point. Point on gradient trajectory. Gradient trajectory. So this point goes this way. It hits another string that it's another point. You get another string. So how can I explain it? So string field I would say looks like differential forms on X.
because they can go all over. All over. Let me still try to draw pictures. So here is X. Here is T star of X. So we have Lagrangian and another Lagrangian, okay? Say that these Lagrangians are very close to each other. String with almost zero tension could be everywhere on X, okay? String can be everywhere. It's small, you see. So in the original A model, where we have Lagrangians like this, strings are here. And in this Fukai story, strings are like this. So string can be open string, open string. Can be everywhere on X, however. It uh, join, it connects I's and J's some manifold. So it has these two indices. So Aij of X is the sector of open strings. I'm trying to answer, Pasha, I'm trying to answer your, your question. Uh, Andre, I don't understand your answer, I'm sorry. Um... Imagine that you have a string connecting two Lagrangian submanifolds. Sorry, no, it's, it's uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I really don't understand even the language in, the, in which the answer is given. Also, also it, is, it is ridiculously late. So uh, may, maybe we should okay. just, I ask, okay, I ask so, you privately. So okay, well, let, us discuss, let us discuss it in private. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm completely confused between, between like world sheet versus target picture because you are giving me a target space picture and I don't understand it. Uh, so, yes, so uh, yeah, somehow I, I don't understand what is AAJ, what is that about? And when you start talking about strings flying somewhere, I don't really understand what is that at all about. It doesn't sound like a field theory to me. Ah. I, sorry, that's my problem. Okay, by the way, it, it was not even sound like a field theory to Fukaya. Okay, mm -hmm. so you are in the good company. Uh, so it is a question for me. I need to prepare how to explain it to you, such that you would understand. <laughs> no, if sorry. I would not be able I'm to liking... explain it to you, such that you would understand, this would mean that I failed. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm making. No, 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 not right now. I am not going to do it right now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will. So it is my homework. Okay. Right. Find words in which I could explain it to you such that you would understand. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, maybe we will discuss it on Friday evening. Mm -hmm. huh? Oh, Friday evening. I think it's, it's yeah, you know, Christmas here. In oh, the... for Friday evening is Christmas. Okay. No, no, no. 
No discussions on Christmas. So, okay, so we will cancel Friday evening. So we will discuss it next, mm -hmm. next time in some detail, since I think it's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. By the way, Wafa, of course, understands this, but, uh, but it doesn't uh, save the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pasha, I will prepare. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I think it's enough for today. So, to, so tomorrow I'll go to two dimensions from this. Mm 